seen new reactions there. I mean, it was such a, a breathless game, a terrific performance by your side. It must be desperately disappointed. Yeah, I thought the players were outstanding. I thought um, everything you wanted them to bring tonight, they brought um, as an individual and as a team. I think every supporter should be going home proud of the team, what they produced tonight. We're frustrated, we're disappointed, we haven't gone through. I think the big decision, uh, which is in Angola, is a really poor decision. When you see it back, it's, it's a red card. And for me, you need them decisions to go your way in games like this. It's small margins, and, and it didn't go our way. But overall, I thought the players were brilliant. The start was magnificent, and uh, you often haven't started well. What was the difference tonight? Yeah, but we had a lot of games where we have started well as well, so uh, I thought the players were brilliant tonight. Uh, from the first minute to the 95th, we started well, scored, possibly should have scored another one, Richie at the back post. Uh, but overall, you got to understand the level of players that they played against there, the level of opposition, the investment they have, and our, our team has been uh, by far and away the better team tonight. The sending off early in the second half, they're down to 10 men. How did that change your thinking in terms of substitutions, etc.? It just allowed us to free up the midfield a bit. Um, we had to be very careful when obviously 11 by 11, um, they're very dangerous in transition. And we knew that obviously, um, and we had to make sure that we were really strong in there. But when they went down to 10, I meant we could free that up a little bit, uh, which, which we did, and uh, left us a little bit exposed, but obviously created chances for us. Well, substitutions worked certainly. Uh, Gaffney, Ferrugia setting up a marker for that goal. Yeah, I didn't want to bring Rory on to be honest, he's a booking away from being suspended. Um, but I just felt they were there for the taking, they were, they were gone, you could feel it, you feel the energy around them, around the dugout, around the pitch, they were arguing with each other, so I just felt right, it's time to go for them. And uh, Rory and Oidemar came on and uh, did well, Oidemar's goal was a brilliant finish. Now what hope does that give you for the Europa League, you drop down if you like that against Macedonian opposition? Uh, you got to do it all again next Thursday. Yeah, we watched the first uh, leg of that game, and they were uh, they were the better team. To be fair, they should have went on to Macedonia with a two or three goal lead. To be honest, they were very very good tonight. I know they lost by one goal, but uh, we know that's going to be another difficult game. But we're at this stage, this level, they're all difficult. Um, but if we play like we did tonight and perform like we did, um, it's going to take a very good team to stop us. Do you think the group stages are inside? Yeah, we're all one, one toy away, obviously, and like I said, we performed like that tonight, um, and it's going to take a very good team to beat us uh, over two legs. Stephen, 3 0 down from the first leg, nobody gave you a hope. So, what did you say to the players before the match to get them motivated for the game? Oh, when we watched the game back, we knew there was only a, a 10 or 15 minute spell where we um, they looked really dangerous. They uh, had a, the majority of possession over there for the first 25 minutes, but never hurt us. Then the attempt minutes really scored the two goals. So there wasn't, like I said, people get carried away with score lines instead of actually analysing the game. And, and it's our job to analyse the game. And we knew we were right there. We knew we would, uh, we would press them more aggressive tonight. And, uh, and we could be more aggressive in our play. And, and we were and, and caused them real problems. Was it frustrating that you're only 1 0 up at half time? There was three balls flashed across the box, a couple of other yeah, really strong yeah. chances as well. Yeah, it was frustrating because, like I said, we started so well. Uh, we had them on the back foot. If, if another one of them goes in, it's a totally different game. We can relax and and, uh, and wait for the tour to come. But um, like I said, it wasn't the big. And uh, I still go back to that big decision with the referee. Yeah. And these games, you need them decisions to go for you. And for me, the refs made an uh, incredible decision. Um, he said Richie's diet when he's in on goal, which is, which is unbelievable. You know? Were you surprised because he was giving out a lot of cards in the game? You would have thought that something like that he would have picked up on. Yeah, well, the fourth official is telling us that was a foul on Richie. And then we look out and the ref has pointed the other way, like, you know, so it looked like the officials were really confused on it as well. Um, yeah, and it, uh, you'd have to really question that decision from the referee. What went wrong with the, the goal they, that you conceded then? Because you go 2 0 up, you're thinking, well, this could be extra time here. Oh, well, we're obviously chasing the game. We need another goal. Um, we're chasing the game. We've made a lot of substitutions. We freed up midfield. And against top players, they're always going to get opportunities. And they get their opportunity in the top. Just the last one round for me, Shkupi. Um, they've played two ties in the Champions League. They drop down now like yourselves, but they don't start their season until the 7th of August. You really have the upper hand going into this tie. No, I'm not just seeing them play. These are a good team. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be very, very careful. Uh, somehow in Ireland, we think we have a divine right to beat teams because we're mid-season. When you see these play, these are a proper team. We said that last year when we played Talon and now we uh, These are a proper team, real pace, real power. They should have won the toy. Um, they haven't, obviously, but uh, you'll see on tours that these are, these are a proper side. Stephen, two issues surrounding the team. One is the injury to Roberto Lopez. Mm. What can you tell us about the severity of that? And also, 
the ongoing speculation regarding a potential move to Blackpool for Andy Lyons. Where, where are we with that at the moment? Uh, I spoke on the annual one, like I said, both clubs have had uh, constant contact, Steve McPhail is dealing with it, but there's nothing, uh, nothing done, nothing agreed. Um, yeah, so there's serious interest, obviously, uh, but nothing's done. Uh, Pico will probably look now about eight weeks for Pico. Just as you find as well, Stephen, just listen, there was some stuff thrown from the stands there mm. by the supporters. Are you a bit worried there might be a sanction coming from UEFA over that? Yeah, but we got to look at there, send a half thrown the bottle into the crowd, first yeah. of all. Um, you speak the bottle up and through it, wait at the crowd, they're going to react. Um, yeah. I know it goes both ways, but uh, they've got to look at um, the centre half that threw the bottle straight into the crowd. Right. Right. Thanks, Stephen. Well, yeah. Cheers. Thank you, Stephen. Aaron, uh, you got the first goal tonight. How did that feel? Um, not really great right after a game, and you don't go through, to be honest. It would have been nice if you score and you go through, but um, that's how we performed really well in the night. And that's something that we wanted to do early was get the crowd behind us and never, never mind the goal. I think before the goal, I think we really rocked them and um, got the crowd right behind us. And from there, that's how I think the energy from the crowd we pushed us on and stifled them a little bit. And I think we had them rocked. Um, we made it really well. And then I have to say it back, but I think Richie's and I don't know, I don't know why Richie would go to the ground if he, he wouldn't like, you know, he's one on one with the keeper and he books Richie, it's, it's a crazy decision I think, so um, yeah, I'm not really disappointed boy. You really had them on the rack in the first half. It was a big contrast to what happened last week in uh, Razgrad. What do you think was the difference tonight? I think if you watch all of our games here in, uh, in Europe, Slovan is a perfect example. I think we were, we were um, getting beaten 2 0 in Bratislava. A big arm out and save late, and then we come back here and we stifled them as well, like rocked them. On the press, it would be the first on the press, me, Richie, and Graham. And I was listening to them, you could hear them saying they didn't know what they wanted to do, and their, their staff didn't seem to be giving them instruction. I knew we had them rocked, and I think they got a red card early in the second half, but we didn't do enough, I think, to put them out. And we get a late goal, we hide them all, and then get sucked out a bunch down the other end a few seconds later. But it's one that we have to learn from. Yeah, I was looking just as you, before you scored the goal, I think it was one shot, none on target in the second half, it was like about five and four in the first half, so that's probably the disappointing thing, you didn't create enough chances yeah, in the second I half. I think we kind of um, got caught up in probably trying to score in every attack, I think we were um, very uh, patient in the first half, even though we created a lot of chances, but I think teams struggle here when they come, to Europe, uh, come in Europe, like, they're a massive team and qualify yeah. for Europe for the last four or five years, but not being disrespectful when I say that, their crowds over there are nothing like what we get here, like, but honestly, for a team that qualifies for Europe with like, two and a half thousand fans in their stadium, it's, like, it's crazy. Like, you yeah. know, they're well back with a very wealthy uh, businessman, but I knew the fans here were going to be big and be happy, and we're, we're going to need them to hopefully with two cracks of qualify in Europe group stages. So um, we're going to need all the fans to, to push us and help us get us over the line because it just shows how uh, evident it can become. When you play against a, a top side like you've obviously got a lot of European experience, but uh, a team of this standard, do you feel you've learned anything more? Yeah, you do, but then at the end, we know that they're very good at one tails and run off the ball, and that's something that we've watched the gaffer show. There's loads of clips, all their stuff, and we've got to get a hand on them. Good players are going to get chances in games, and we've played against Slovan, Apollo, and AC Milan, probably the best team, but to be fair, they're from forward, probably the best. We didn't play over there, but they're from forward, just as good as AC Milan, and they got world class players over there. Just shows you when they came when they come here, they didn't really seem up to the fight, like, and in terms of don't get wrong, they go through on the two legs that are on paper are the better side because they win the game, don't they? But um, I'm not one for moral victories, but we have to take something from the game and bring that into our domestic uh, form in the FAI Cup. Yeah, well, you've got the FAI Cup on Friday before you go back to Europe. Yeah. Uh, I know you'll be you know, huge favourites going to the game on yeah. Friday, but again, it's just that, that Wednesday to Friday, or sorry, when, weekend to yeah. Wednesdays, Tuesdays, it's very hard to keep that up. Yeah, but that's what you're here at this club to play twice a week, and this is why we uh, dedicate ourselves. So we're in the biggest club in the country, we're a professional, we have the best setup in the country, and this is where you strive to be here to play twice a week. And you see all the top teams in Europe do it, and we want to get there. We want to play, we want to play group stage football in um, Europe and do well on domestic fronts and all domestic fronts on, on that behalf. So um, this is what you want. This is why we have a big squad. We have a few knocks at the minute, but players can step up. Anyone who comes in and comes out so, so strong as each other. And we're, um, we're a very close knit group and we'll stick together no matter what. So um, we have a long way to go. But we that, as I say, I don't do moral victories. I'm bitterly disappointed here. I'd rather be standing here if we 
at times I thought it was going to be a special night. You, you get that sense in the air and during the game, and but it wasn't to be. But um, we just, as I said, we need to take them performances and their our standards, what we performed on the night into our, the rest of our season. And it's the ever-changing footballing landscape, of course, because in years gone by, Europe would have been over tonight, yeah, and you yeah. just concentrate domestically. Yeah. But now you have so many opportunities to create so many more magical nights here. Yeah, I think that's what comes down to the first game in the Champions League, really, doesn't it? That how it showed last year we got beaten by Slovan, and then you don't get enough cracks at um, group stage. And it shows this year when we beat by Bernie and Sir three 0 and go over there and see how in their all game, then you. Even if you get beaten, which we did today, you still have two cracks at uh, group stage. So that's um, that's where you want to win your league domestically. If you give yourself that best chance, and hopefully you're seeded, or if you get a bit of luck and you're seeded, and um, we were this year, but we're not done. We want to challenge on, as I say, European fronts, domestic and FA Cup. So mm. you probably don't think about this too much now, but I mean, this was an event tonight that didn't get national television yeah, coverage, yeah. which, you know, <laughs> the ladies' final, women's yeah. final, whatever you want to call it, was on in England. It's wrong, isn't it? Personally, I do, because I think RT probably looked at it and said 3-0, Roberts don't have a chance, but I knew where our mentality within that dressing room, we don't weigh ourselves off. We've played against, we came here and played against AC Milan in a one-off game and gave them a really good game. But don't get me wrong, they won 2 nil. but we, uh, we can't control that. We've just got to control what's in their dressing room and we're a close-knit group. It's not up to us if RT televised it or don't. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't. I think it would have been a great skept, uh, spectacle, but it wasn't to be. And um, here you, I'd be standing here all day if I could tell you about what I think should be done with the league in terms of... Uh, television and games within Europe, not only Shamrock Rovers, uh, St. Pat's, Derry, the other teams, and Sligo. So, so um, but I'd be here a long time before speaking about it. But it wasn't, they didn't want to show up. But as I said, I think that would have been because it was 3 0.